What's going on growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. One of my main goals with this channel is to get as many of you growing as I possibly can. And one thing I value more than any other on this platform is to be able to connect with you. You guys ask questions, today I'm answering. Let's go! In my opinion, it's never bad to start with the basics. You probably saw from the intro, I'm from New Jersey, but where at? I'm actually located right along the coast, about 15, 20 minutes from the ocean in a town or a county called Ocean County, right in central Jersey. And by your comments, I know that I've got some fellow Jersey growers also, and I love having that. Whether you're local or you're far off, I love that you're a part of Team Grow and that you're a part of this whole community within us here. I want you to know though, just because I live in New Jersey, it doesn't mean we might not have the same climate. One thing to note is when you're growing a garden is to find out what growing zone you're in. That's so important. Here in Jersey where I'm at, we're in zone 7A. A lot of your questions often have to do with property size. You wanna know how big is the whole entire property or how big is the new food forest? How big is the seven year old food forest? Get encouraged because some of these answers, they'll actually shock you. Some of you have even asked, James, how many acres is a seven year old food forest? And that question is one of my favorites because in my opinion, that means I'm doing a good job as a designer. This section here, this fruit forest, it's only 67 feet by 52 feet. I know it probably looks a lot bigger, especially from inside, but that's the idea behind it. I often say that you don't need a lot of space to grow a lot of food. And this is one of the testaments to it. This whole property size, I'm only on a third acre. That might be a lot of space to you, but in general, we all know it's not huge. The new food forest too. We're growing a lot of food in here. Annuals, setting up for perennials. This section, it's only 42 feet by 37 feet. If you're not familiar with my channel, or this form of gardening, one thing you might notice right off the bat is the ground is covered in wood chips. Look at this, things don't seem too upset, do they? But when it comes to wood chips, I always get my channel and all my videos flooded with, are wood chips gonna lock up nitrogen from my plants? Nope. And I'll tell you two ways or show you why they're not gonna. The first one is, as I'm walking through here, take a look at the foliage, the color of it. What do you think? Does it look nitrogen deficient? Also, I'm gonna tell you that it's not gonna if you use the correct application. See, if I take these wood chips right here and I mix them into the soil, if I till them into the soil, I'll promise you that nitrogen will get locked up. The reason for that is because we're gonna have to have some nitrogen mixed with this brown material in order for that decomposition to occur. But with the correct application, that just won't happen. Because when we layer the wood chips, it's not the mixing of the green and the brown that's gonna decompose it, it's actually the fungus. That's the key. Laying it on top, you'll have the fungus come down, the teeth of the soil, they'll break everything down to perfect humus. That's what we want. The second way I'm gonna show you that wood chips don't tie up nitrogen is by showing you this plant right here. Coming close a little bit, we'll see this pepper, it's growing in wood chips. I never used any fertilizer, any additives, and just look at that foliage color. Look at the fruit on it. This thing speaks for itself. As you can see, this thing is not lacking nitrogen or phosphorus or potassium. The wood chips are breaking down and feeding this. The microbiological life, the fungus, that's what's gonna do the work. That's what's gonna convert all these wood chips, all this organic matter into humus, into food for the plants. Seeing those peppers and how beautiful they are, you're probably wondering what variety they are and where I get my seeds and my trees and my bushes from. When it comes to my seeds, my favorite place personally to get it is Fedco Seeds. Good prices, good selection, and it's the same place actually Paul Gauchi gets his. When it comes to bushes, blueberries, raspberries, things like that, I actually prefer Burnt Ridge. When it comes to fruit trees, as you know, I like disease resistant, berry varieties from good companies. My favorite company for ordering trees right now is Rain Tree Nursery. One thing I want to note though, Rain Tree actually is currently under uh, new ownership. So whether or not it's going to be the same company in the future, that's something you got to look into yourself. Throughout this growing season so far, there's been one cucumber that's just been an absolute stunner, outperforming every other one. I think you noticed it in the harvest video. I had some of you ask questions on what variety that was and I'm going to share it with you. But if you're liking this video, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button, share with your friends, and ring the notification bell. That really does help the channel out a whole lot. And if you're enjoying those harvest videos that we're making, let me know, because I promise you, I can make another one tomorrow. We have enough to harvest, and I do love doing it. It's a lot of work to make them, but it's one of the things that makes me uh, happier and just brings me more joy than anything else. Let me flip this camera and show you what variety we're growing. So this one here is actually called the Japanese Long Cucumber. And I mentioned that we get our seeds from Fedco, usually, but that's more the standard varieties. It's got the best prices and everything. But we also like to get our seeds from Baker Creek or rareseeds.com. They've got great varieties. This one here though is one I'll be growing every year in the future. It's high production, it's great flavor. You just can't top it. Another question I often get 
a lot actually is James. What kind of watering system do you have in here? Or how do you keep all those trees watered in this big food forest? Well, to be honest with you, I guarantee that I water a lot less than you would even think. Look at this tree here, a plum tree. I've got cherry trees too, 20 feet tall, maybe 25 feet tall. I don't think I could even pump enough water from a well to feed these trees with enough water on my own. So I let the rain do it. But when it's not raining, how do I keep them watered? How do I keep them hydrated? Well, this is where the idea of a system comes into play. I've said it before, but look out at a natural forest locally to you. Let me know if you see someone going out there watering daily at the bottom of the tree or feeding the trees. It just doesn't happen. When you're in a natural forest or a food forest like this, the trees, the system takes care of itself. I only water in heavy, heavy droughts when I have to or when I'm first planting something. And that's why when I make those harvest videos, I want you to know and there's more than appears at the surface level. So I'm growing a lot of this food, harvesting a lot of this from watering little to none, even my annuals. I just don't have enough time or even water to sit out there and do it. Another thing is the lack of space we have here. So there's not a lot of water, not a lot of space. We're still getting good harvests and also we're beyond organic. What do I mean by that? I mean no fertilizers, no pesticides, no sprays of any kind. This right here, it's as natural as you can get. You probably question why I say things like, this is the best food in the world, or you can't get better than this. But I'm telling you, in my opinion, there's no possible way you can get food better than this. You can get food that has a higher mineral content, like Paul Gauchi has, but you can't get food that's higher quality. You can't get more natural. The president, the king, no one can buy food this good. You gotta grow it yourself. But honestly, when it comes down to it, how much to water, that's all circumstantial. I can't tell you to water or not to water. That's something you have to learn and grow. When it comes to me, if I'm in a long drought period, I wash the plants. If I think they need water, I'll water them. A good way to tell is I'll go down into the wood chips under the plants, just start digging. If the soil is super, super dry, then obviously you need to water. If it's damp, if it's moist, then we're good. Remember, you wanna check also the soil level, not just the wood chip layer. You wanna make sure that the soil below is wet. But this is what I was talking about when I talked about the, the fungus break it down the wood chips, not, not the nitrogen. Look at this, this is one thick mat of fungus, the way it wants to move up like that. Look at this. This is what happens when you've got the fungus doing the work for you, breaking all that stuff down. And remember, trees love fungal dominated soil. So what we wanna do is get down to the soil level and make sure that that is actually nice and damp and wet. As you can see, years of putting the right system in is gonna give you good soil Good, good water content, but what's important is the soil structure. You can see how we squeeze that all together, it stays together, but then it'll easily crack apart. That's good soil structure. That's good pore spacing. That's what happens when you build your soil with wood chips. Another question I often get is, James, I notice in your videos you always say we, we, we. Why do you always say we and not just I? Well, there's a number of reasons. One of the main reasons is because when I say we, I'm talking about all of us. We are team grow. I'm not doing this just for myself. And also, I don't do it alone. There's no way I could do this alone. The food forest would be very little without my main companion, my partner in crime, my sidekick, and you know who it is. Little Tuck here. We have great time in the garden. We're always spending time out here, and he's more than just a little buddy that, you know, eats the snacks with me. He protects this place. Sometimes people ask me, James, how do you keep the squirrels off? How do you keep the chipmunks off some of your fruit? Look at him right here. This guy doesn't take a day off. He doesn't take a break. He's been head of security at this garden for the last six years, and I can guarantee we wouldn't have as much success if we, if we didn't have him. He encourages me to get out here, and he's taught me more lessons than I, could, than I could imagine. You know, the lessons of just enjoying every moment out here. When he's out here, when he's in the garden, he makes sure that he takes full advantage of the time he has, of all the sniffs, of all the cucumbers, and it's just a joy to be out here with him. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, one of my goals with this channel is to get you growing, but to also inspire you and encourage you. And one of the main reasons for that is because before I got started doing this, I had to be encouraged, I had to be inspired. I've told you the story before, but Joel Salatin played a pivotal role in my life, in my gardening life, and he really changed the way I look at things. I know he's not a gardener, but it was his approach to food. It was his approach to, to nature. It was that holistic idea that got me thinking. He's the one who introduced me to permaculture. He's the one who made the big change for me. So that question of what inspired me, it was Joel. You need to find out what's inspiring you. Here's my main question and my takeaway for you guys before I let you go. What has got you turned on? Think about that. And what's got you turned off? 
When I found out the answers to the, those two questions, I'm telling you, my life exploded into change. That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. I know this video might not have been the most technical as in regards to gardening, but I think it's important and I hope it brought you value. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and share it with your friends because we got to get out of here real quick. There's a storm brewing, the garden's going to drink it all in. James Prigioni and Tuck are out.